Yo, what is going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you a DPS build, one of the best DPS builds in the game right now, and a complete guide to it. For our weapons of choice, we'll be running Greatsword and Spear. Greatsword is our primary damage source, with our spear being like kind of a backup weapon to just apply buffs and debuffs to the enemies. If you wanted a range option for this build, I'd recommend running the bow here. This is exactly what you would run on the bow for PvE, by the way, so... Let's get this bow, Syncratic Bow. You can farm this up really easily. It's very good in PvP and PvE as well. For the weapon masteries for the Greatsword, I would recommend running this. The key things to note is a un unrelenting onslaught. When you hit an enemy with a charge heavy, you reduce all your current active ability cooldowns by 10%, allowing you to have insane CDR, basically spamming whatever ability you want all the time. And onslaught, what does onslaught do? Increases your damage by 15%, and it also increases the damage you take by 15%, and has an added bonus of your heavies charge 50% faster, but consume 10 stamina. This means that ma the majority of your DPS will be coming from spamming heavy attack mixed in with some abil abilities to stay in onslaught stance like skyward slash once you are in onslaught this is the only ability you're going to be using to kill bosses skyward slash this applies two stacks of rends that deal 10 percent increased damage while you're in onslaught you get an extra stack making it 15 percent allowing you to absolutely shred bosses with you and your group now what is the reason we're running step fast strike and relentless rush you may ask well i like step fast because it has a nice heal and it gives you stamina on hit and it gives a bleed as well so and it allows you to enter defiance stance which reduces your damage taken by 15 percent and your outgoing damage by 15 percent you can also block attacks while heavy aim. so you will enter defiance stance here if you need to be extra tanky for a little bit or you need the extra survivability and once you need to go back into onslaught you would use relentless rush and that is because in defiance stance Relentless Rush will heal you for 15% of the damage it does. This is great for AoE clearing and just for getting some nice extra life seal during a boss fight if you need it. For the Spear, these are the three abilities we'll be running. I don't have the Spear maxed out on this character, but I will showcase a page of it fully maxed out so you know exactly what to run. The Skewer here is an amazing big dick damaging ability. It applies a nasty, nasty bleed onto your opponents. Perforate here. It applies a nasty run, stacking with our greatsword run. Not only that, but it applies a weaken to the boss, reducing its damage by 30%, making you overall more tanky and your group more, more tanky because you're applying weakens to enemies and mobs, you know, basically making you harder to kill. And then Cyclone here is just kind of like an AoE heal. Is That's really all it's good for. It does some good damage and it gives you some extra stamina when you get this perk down here. Exploited Weakness is where a lot of the damage will come from the spear. You'll deal 30% bonus damage when you have all... Three negative debuffs onto the opponent which will you will you should always have in a group setting especially all right onto the weapon perks the serenity this is what makes the great sword an absolute killing machine in pve this artifact right here the bonus it has is balanced blade offensive stance two percent in power per attack for five seconds max 10 stacks so while you're onslaught stance you'll be doing an additional 20% damage because of this in power. On top of that, you have trench and strikes and trench and crits, which cannot normally ever be on the same weapon because, but since this is an artifact, it's allowed to happen. This allows your heavy melee attacks to absolutely nuke enemies. And then refreshing move here is kind of just meh, it's whatever, but you have to have it, it comes with the weapon. And then what you want to put on is the gem slot when you do get the weapon. And you want to put an opal in there so you can do 9% extra damage while your stamina is not full. I chose leeching here because I like the extra healing it provides. But if you want more damage, you can definitely choose to run the damage variant where when you deal damage, you deal 8% void damage or whatever damage you want. I just like the leeching for extra healing in PvE. For your spear, you want to be running in Enfeebling Skewer. Skewer hits, apply weaken, reducing all the target's damage by 44% for 8 seconds. That is this ability right here. When you hit that... They basically will be useless for eight seconds. You also want to be running Keenly Jagged on your spear. So this passive right here, I don't have it, but this is really good because this adds a bleed when you crit, dealing 10% weapon damage per second for six seconds, allowing you to absolutely stack your DPS. And then for your final perk, you either want Enchantment or Abyssal Attunement. Either one's a, either one of these are really good as well. Or you can run Vicious or Keen. There's a bunch of good perks as your third, but they're not really important. The main two are Keenly Jagged and Enfeeble Skewer for the maximum damage and debuffing potential. For your amulet, you're going to be wanting to run divines and health on all your amulets. That's ideal. But the biggest and most important one is your protection. So what does the, your protection do? Well, your protection keeps you safe from all the naughty bosses out there. This reduces slash damage by 14%. But if I'm doing a mutation, most mutations 
will have a special damage bonus. Bonus. So as we go to a need here, as you can clearly see, enemies deal 50% of all damage as fire damage. So for this dungeon, I will need a fire amulet. Or if I want to go down here to, let's say, Savage Divide. Enemies deal 50% of all damage as void damage. So for this dungeon, I will need a void amulet. Now, depending on the week, the dungeon will change. So this could be maybe like three weeks from now. This might not be fire. This could be ice. It's not always the same elemental for each dungeon. So keep that in mind. That's why you always want to be having lots and i mean lots of amulets on standby so here is my nature protection amulet right here i have a nature gem in there so i take less nature damage and i have the nature protection perk receive 15 percent less nature damage so i'm overall better tanky in the nature dungeon if i slot the fire amulet here i will now have 43.6 percent fire damage resistance now a good rule of thumb is when you're doing the high end the top of the top of the mutated dungeons you want to have a minimum of 40% damage resist for said dungeon. So for a need, I would need a minimum 40% fire damage to comfortably go in there with my build and not be getting one shot endlessly because I don't have enough protection. Especially since I'm on Greatsword and I take 15% more damage, it's even more important for the Greatsword build to be running it. Now for the ring, you can choose whatever ring you want. I like to run the artifact Blood Drinker here. If you're not running Blood Drinker for your artifact, it doesn't really matter what artifact you run on your jewelry, but I recommend Blood Drinker for many reasons. One, it has really good two perks, Leeching and Hardy. The third perk has to be Slashing. That's because our Greatsword does all Slash damage, and Greatsword is our primary way of dealing big dick damage. And the bonus of running Blood Drinker is it gives me 25% lifesteal. All healing from lifesteal is increased by 5%. But you do lose 25% damage. Now, that, that number is a lie on Greatsword. I don't know if it is for every other weapon, but for Greatsword, it's 100% a lie. Because it only actually reduces your damage on Greatsword by 13%. I don't know if it's like a bugger or something, but it's not 25%. It's only 13% on Greatsword. So this is insanely valuable in PvE. If you have a shitty healer, this Blood Drinker will absolutely carry you through the dungeon. You can self-sustain, you can even sometimes solo bosses depending on the level of dungeon that you are in, just from Blood Drinker absolutely coming in clutch. That's why I love running this. This is basically the if I have a terrible team, Blood Drinker will be will save me and allow me to carry the dungeon. Life loop. You, you can farm this earring. I recommend doing so. It's one of the best earrings you can farm in the entire game. It gives you healthy toast. When you drink a mana potion, you gain 15% of your base health. That's these bad boys over here. Consumables. Cooldowns are 10% faster, that's all your potions. And then regenerating 0.5% of your health every second. This is actually insanely strong. People sleep on this, this, but this gives you so much extra healing in the dungeon or in PvP. It's just an absolute monster perk and I definitely recommend doing it. For your armor pieces here, you basically want to be running health and elemental aversion on all your pieces. And then your third perk can usually be whatever. It doesn't matter too much. Like refreshing is fine. For our artifact here on the armor, it's going to be a tomb leather pants. This allows us to get plus 10 to all attributes, allowing us to get maximum amount of attributes in, in the game. And the reason why elemental aversion and health are so strong, because most bosses in high mutations do half elemental damage. And this reduces the ranged elemental by 4.5%. And you can stack it all the way up you know, five times giving you a lot of extra survivability in those high end mutated dungeons. Health is for the same reason. This gives you more survivability. Now, now the, you can run some weapon perks on your armor, such as leeching cyclone. What this allows is when you use cyclone, you now get a heal for using it, but you would put this on your armor. Any piece it will do. Towers nullification. This is actually extremely important in some dungeons because sometimes you need someone to cleanse the enemy's buffs and skywards is generally really good at doing that. So just by hitting them, you'll reduce one of their buffs completely and reduce their other buffs by 50%. Set fat purification. This one's really not needed too much. I recommend just skipping this one and never worrying about it. But one that I would not skip is Relentless Freedom. Activating Relentless Rush removes roots and slows and increases Relentless Rush critical hit chance 5 to 20%, allowing you to not only do more damage, but getting if you get rooted or snared, you're, you're able to cleanse it and just run away like a little rat. I should also mention the... The gem you want in your spirit will be opal as well for your rune of choice i recommend heart rune it just it's a good aoe clearing rune you can run whatever heart rune you want here i recommend just slotting mainly for pvp here for my attributes here i'm going to be running 162 strength 350 dex 100 con 25 focus and 25 intelligence you only can run this setup with 
the leather pants that I am running. That's why I mentioned that. The reason why you need 100 con is because if anything less than this, then you can get one shot too often. Especially since we're on greatsword and we take 15% additional damage. The 100 con, in my opinion, is 150% needed. Do not go lower than 100 con for like any DPS build. I recommend always 100 con. It's a good safety net. The reason why you run 350 decks is just for maximum damage. Plus you get 15% crit while empowered. Really good for some more DPS potential. And then you just go 150 strength so you get some extra regeneration of your stamina while you are exhausted. And since both weapons scale off strength and death, this is just generally what I like to run as a very good split. You put the extra point into intelligence here to get the 5% increased backstab damage and random critical hits. And the extra 10 points into focus to get the extra cooldown reduction. You only can do this if you're running the pants, by the way. I can't stress that enough. If you're not running the pants, don't put any points into intelligence or focus because you will be trolling. For buffs and consumables that you will need in every dungeon will be your three potions, health potions, regeneration potion, and mana potions. Make sure you always bring lots of hearty meals with you so you guys well fed and ready to pop off. While you eat this, you recover 220 health per second for 20 seconds. It's basically like, oh, I need some extra health. Just eat one of these, chow down. It's like a five-star buffet real quick. Your guy will start regenerating and your guy will start regenerating some good HP. Next, you'll need your holding stones. I recommend tier two if you're a peasant. Increases your weapon damage by 4%. Once you, you know, get out of the slums, you can afford common holding stones. Increases weapon damage by 5% for 30 minutes. And once you're Jeff Bezos, completely rich, then you can start using powerful holding stones to do dungeons. I never, never recommend using these for dungeons. These are generally just used for wars. These are extremely expensive. Like, you need to be absolutely banking to be popping holding stone, these type of holding stones for dungeons, so... This be sticking with the tier twos. Next, you'll need your ward potions. Increases your damage absorption from angry earth by 10%. There's a ward potion for each enemy in the entire game. Angry earth, lost, corrupted. There is always a ward potion for each of those. And the lower tier, the more cheap they are. They still do pretty good even at lower tiers. So if you are poor, just get a lower tier ward potion. It will do you justice. It's a lifesaver. Next, we have powerful corrupt. What this does is this increases our damage against a certain enemy type by 13%. So this one here is for Corrupted. Here's a Lost Coating. Here's an Ancient Coating, as you can see here. It just depends on the enemy type that you're fighting. I recommend sticking with Tier 4s or 3s. They do just fine, cheaper, and they get the job done. Something important to note, though, however, is these only work on the weapon that you apply it. So if you put it on your Spear, you will not be getting the bonus on your Greatsword. So as you can see here, I'll just demonstrate that as well. So if I'm holding my Greatsword, I pop my Coating. Right, you see it. You can see it now on my, above my health bar. I swap weapons; it's now gone. So, so that's something important to note. Don't sleep on that. The holding stones and the other buffs don't work as such. See, they work on both weapons, so don't worry about the other buffs. It's just your coatings. Next, you will need your food. I recommend always taking in strength, dex, intelligent food, whatever food for your primary way of dealing damage. Always bring con food, just in case you are dying to a mechanic and you need some extra health. It's cheaper than respecting and it can definitely help you a lot, especially in some dungeons that are quite a bit harder than others. Some dungeons in this game are extremely easy where other dungeons are definitely a lot harder than others. I'll leave that up to you to figure out which ones. If you want like an oh shit button, you can run oak flesh bombs here. Alternative version, powerful gemstone dust. This this increases your absorption of physical damage by 35% for 20 seconds, extremely powerful. Or the gemstone dust variant will increase your elemental damage absorption by 35% for 20 seconds. These are also extremely expensive, so you can run the lower tier versions and you'll be doing just fine. Another tip is if you're in gen, bring some blight tinted chairs so you can get rid of the blight status effect. All right, so let me just showcase now how to use the build real quick. It's not too hard. So generally you want to start by usually popping a regen potion. It gives you some extra survivability. Start by using a heavy into the skewer, into the prep right here. And then as you can see, these, these guys will try and come at me. So I want to use Steadfast. Spin through my enemies here. And you'll just watch as my my health bar goes absolutely down. But the the blood ring will just allow me to life steal to infinity and beyond. And this is how you basically survive in PvE. As long as you keep heavy attacking with the greatsword and you are not getting one shot, you are unkillable. If you're against a boss, your rotation will be a little bit different. So let me pull these guys. Let's say I'm fighting this guy like a boss. I would start off with Skewer, stab him a couple times, use that. I also then like to use this just to make sure I'm not taking too much damage. Relentless rush in. This guy would slash immediately. 
to apply the Ren. I have to roll here because I might lose some HP. And then once the Ren is applied, you just heavy, 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 reapply Skyward. And you just do this until the boss is generally dead. If the boss chunks you like this, let's say he chunks me and I'm scared, usually you would roll immediately steadfast to get your stamina back, roll again. And then I like to use Relentless Rush just to heal up completely. And then just go back into heavy, and once you feel comfortable, use Skyward again to apply the rend. And make sure while you're doing all that, you're also switching to your back bar, applying Skewer, and your Perforate. One thing I should note is while using Skyward, it is an animation lock. This has gotten me killed multiple times. Be careful while using Skyward. It can definitely get you killed. If you are low, do not use Skyward, basically. Only use Skyward when you're at full HP is a good rule. That way you won't get one shot. Like I said, if you're low, you just roll that fast, roll again, relentless in, to get your health back and go back to heavying. And once you feel comfortable, Skyward again. Go apply the red and you're good to go. Apply your debuffs on your back bar when you can. Like that. You don't need to use this. It's faster just to switch weapons and go back to your Great sword to continue doing damage. If you guys did enjoy the video, it would mean a lot to me. Hit that like button and subscribe. I'll be streaming over on Twitch. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below or stop by the Twitch. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions.